All right, guys, we've got a uh, Syncor uh, PR570. Uh, you know, the PR57, I just did that little mod on where I put a jack on the back of it and put a meter on the front of it. And what I realized was I really need two bench variacs now because I've got two benches. I've got an RF bench and I've got my audio bench. So I happened to come across this at a really good deal, um, better than I've seen in ages. And it looks like brand new inside and out. And But hey, it's mine, so I'm gonna do the mod. I'm gonna put a hole back here, put a chassis mount um, plug so that I can plug into the back of it, feed down into a power strip versus having it on the front. I just thought I'd show you the process I go through to do that. Okay, what I'm gonna do is take a couple steps here. I wanna drill something, this is about a, what is it, a quarter inch drill bit, okay? Um, because I don't wanna start out with a great big hole and you need a fairly big hole for the chassis punch itself. And so I'll start out with something smaller like this, then I'll move to a stepper bit that'll move me up to getting into this and uh, should be pretty sweet and simple. These, these are designed to drop right into a one inch hole. So much better than trying to use an I, a square IEC cutter or whatnot. It's pretty easy to make a one inch round, round hole. This is just a green lead chassis punch here that I've got several of. I mean, well, they call this blasphemy on a beautiful looking unit, but if it's not functional the way I need it, you know, and like I said, I paid for it. So anyway, drill the little quarter inch hole. Now let's get the stepper bit in there. These will work just like a drill bit and you just kind of get it started in there and you work it as you go and it'll chill, it'll chisel out chunk at a time till I get it large enough to get that bolt through there. And as you can see, two or three steps, I'm there. The one thing I will tell you to be careful of, um, you can see all the little metal shavings coming off here. We want to make sure those don't get inside the transformer windings somehow. So I'm being really careful with that and we'll vacuum this unit out when we get done. As you can see now, I've got the bolt on one side and the cutter on the other. Now it's just a matter of, I believe this is probably a 7 16 inch. Uh, just tightening that up. And literally about 30 turns later, um, a little wrench, pop, and you've got a beautiful, perfect, beautiful hole here. And let's put this little jack in it. And just in case you need one of these right here, I got it off of Amazon. A two pack. They're not super cheap. I want to say about eight or nine bucks, something like that. But that thing just slides right in there and snaps right in. I'm going to have to push it. It's not, not trivial to push it in there. But once it's in there, it does not come out. And check that out. Beautiful. Um, all I got to do now is solder this up and break the connection here between this jack down here and these plugs over here. So we'll, we'll splice in somewhere along here. Number one rule of using tools, put them back where you got them. You'll know where they're at next time. And when I said I had a few chassis punches, I've got a few. <laughs> All right, so um, I've cut the zip ties here. I'm gonna break these. I'm gonna tie into them, tie back here, heat shrink them up nicely and uh, do it up nicely. I got several things going on the bench right now, some of which I'm waiting on parts on. Just trying to get all my gear back to snuff before I put it back on the bench and get it the way I want it. Because I don't plan to touch this stuff again the rest of my life, is to be honest. Um, hopefully what I, the restores I'm doing right now will carry me through. Alright, for the wire I'm going to splice these up with, nothing better than a good old uh, dollar power cord from the Goodwill. They're easy to find, just um, three prong on one end. I just cut it off. I'm just going about three inch segments at a time and move, removing the sheathing here and I'll get the wire I need. All right, take a look at how I did this. Cut it, um, I soldered the big two ones back together, wrapped them up, I stripped about an inch off of each, and then I took the third one and I wrapped it all around and I soldered it on there good. So I've got two coming out one side, one coming out the other side. These things are twisted together. They're soldered well together. Now it's just a matter of slide my heat shrink tubing back up over this thing I need some slightly larger heat shrink tubing next time. There, there it goes. Now, I use a hot air gun like you use for SMD soldering and just um, get the other wires out of the way here. Shrink this stuff right on down. So if you'll notice, all soldered up nice and neat back here, zip tied off, tied off over here. I use some heat shrink tubing here as a sleeve as it goes underneath this short metal over here. And then I brought it back over, tied it all in, zip tied everything back up. 
One other little Variac tip for you while I have you. Whatever you do on a Variac, if you listen, as I turn that, you can hear it and you think, okay, it needs lubricating, right? It's fine to lubricate the front shaft on a Variac, but never, never lubricate the winding back here. You can clean the winding with some contact cleaner if you want, but this little piece right here is typically made out of graphite and it's self-lubricating and it is designed to slide on the copper coils here. If you go and put some type of dielectric grease or something on there, what happens is then it collects dust and then that dust as you use it over time starts to eat into your windings. It will cause you issues over the long haul if you use it that much, but just uh, Leave these things alone. Um. All right, here we are up on the bench. I have wanted one of these Sincor PR570s for the better part of 20 plus years. They're just expensive. They used to be $1,000 plus, sometimes $1,200, $1,300. Lately, I'm seeing them in. Usually, they're pretty rough um, condition-wise in that seven to $900 range. This one popped up last week on eBay. I made an offer at 500 I think he countered back 550 or so, and I ended up with it, and uh, turned out to be beautiful, so I was super happy about it. Seller had zero feedback, so <laughs> this was his first eBay sale, but I thought, what the heck, I got, I got, you know, eBay's pretty protecting and that kind of stuff, so anyway, we got it on the bench now, got it plugged in, got it tied into our uh, power strip down here, and we are good to go. Stay tuned. I got this coming up next. Uh, you'll get to see what it is. Anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. Hope you learned something, maybe a tip or two, if nothing else, today. See you guys soon.